In this video, we look at graph theory, which is part of the AI HL course in topic three, geometry and trigonometry. Now there's a lot of information involved with graph theory. So the aim of this video is to give you a high level overview of this subtopic, and then talk about some of the common types of questions that you'll encounter in an IB AI HL exam. Okay, let's talk about graph theory. Graph theory is all about the connection between physical objects. So let's have a look at this graph here. Imagine that points A through F are towns in an area and the government of this particular area here wants to connect these six towns with a railway network. And we, they, they have planned this out by these lines here. So that's one example, or perhaps there's office buildings and we wanna connect the office buildings with a fiber optic telecommunications network. So graph theory is all about connections between either areas or objects. And I actually like to think of graph theory as networks instead. I think networks is perhaps a better word for it. So that's what it's all about, the connection between physical objects. Okay, let's start with some terminology. In this graph here, we have both vertices and edges. The vertices are the, are the six towns, A through F, and the edges are the lines that connect the vertices together. Now, if we look at vertex F here, we can say that it has degree two, which means that there are two edges that come out of that vertex. Vertex C, on the other hand, will have degree four, because there's one, two, three, four edges coming out of C. Now currently, this graph here is undirected because there are no arrows on the edges. Now in the context of this graph here, that would mean that the railways can go in either direction. So people could travel from town E to down F directly or the other way. However, you may see some graphs that have arrows on there. So for example, this arrow here, that will mean that people can only travel from E to F, but not the other way. In that case there, if there are arrows on the graph, they will be directed graphs as opposed to undirected graphs. Now let's talk about weighted graphs. This, this first graph here is currently unweighted. There's no numbers on the edges. However, I have an example of a weighted graph here, and that actually gives the weighting of the edges. So for example, this could be the time in minutes to actually travel from E to F on this railway network. So we can see there that say to go from C to D might take 60 minutes as opposed to E to F, which would take 120 minutes. Let's now talk about connected graphs. At the moment, both of these graphs are connected. Connected means that you can traverse, that's actually the correct word as opposed to travel, traverse. So you can traverse to any vertex from any other vertex on the graph here. As opposed to say a disconnected graph, if I had another town out here, G, and the government didn't connect town G together, this graph here would now be disconnected because you couldn't traverse to town G complete graphs, neither of these two graphs here are complete. What defines a complete graph is that you can travel, or sorry, you can traverse to every other vertex in, in one step, in one direct route. Here, you can't actually travel from B to F in one direct route, you would need to go through C and E and F, whereas a complete graph might look like this. From any vertex, you can travel to every other vertex on the graph in one go. Subgraph, that's just a smaller portion of the overall graph. So what if we were only focused on towns A, B, and C? We could actually draw a subgraph of that just, just with A, B, and C. So we could just draw the A, B, and C graph, and that would be a subgraph of the graph A to F. And finally, there are different words to describe different types of routes, and they are walks, trails, paths, circuits, cycles. I recommend maybe just checking your textbook for the definitions of these. I won't go through all of them now, because it probably take a little bit too long, but they are ways to describe different routes. So for example, if I went sort of A, B, C, A, that might be a certain type of route. In fact, that's actually a cycle. I start and finish at the same vertex. So we have different words here to describe different types of routes. And some exam questions will say, determine a circuit uh, to, 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 to do such and such. So it's important to understand the definitions of these words.
Okay, let's now talk about adjacency tables and matrices. And I have a table here. These types of adjacency tables can either be directed or undirected. And currently looking at my graphs here, they are undirected. And they can also be weighted or unweighted. And I have an unweighted graph here in the left and I have a weighted on the right. So they could be a combination depending on direction and weighting. But I'm gonna show you here uh, how to fill out a table for an undirected and also unweighted, because that'll then lead into one-step and multi-step adjacency matrices. So in this case here, in this blank table here, for graph theory, we always have from on the rows and two on the columns. Now looking at this graph here, if I wanna go from a to a, is there an edge that does that? Well, no, there's not. There could be a loop. Uh, loops do do that, but in this case there uh, is not. So I would put a dash here. Can I traverse from A to B in one direct route? Yes, I can. So then we put a one there. As opposed to say A to F, can we traverse directly from A to F? We cannot, so we put a dash there. So that's all there is to it. I'm now gonna complete the rest of this table. And that's the completed graph there. I can then convert that to a matrix using my calculator. So that's the matrix there. Store it as a letter and hit enter. Now the benefit of that is currently this adjacency table and this adjacency metrics show all the direct routes. So can I traverse from B to C? Yes. Can I traverse from B to E? Currently no. But what about for what's called two-step routes? So in other words, B to E in two steps. So, so, so we would be able to do that, B to C, C to E. How can I find out all the possible two-step routes? Well, now that I have this matrix in my calculator, I can go A to the power of two, hit enter, and this adjacency table now shows all of my two-step routes. What if I went A to the power of three? That shows all the possible three-step routes. So a three-step route would be say A to D, D to F, F to E, so very valuable understanding how to create an, adja um, create an adjacency table and then raise that matrix to the power to find a multi-step route. Okay, let's now talk about minimum spanning trees. Let's say in this original example here that the government didn't have enough money to create all of these railway networks. So they decided instead of creating all, what is the most cost-effective way to at least provide every town some access to the railway network, some connection into the network? So that would be by creating what's, creating what's called a minimum spanning tree. And I have shown that here highlighted in yellow. This is the most cost-effective way to at least give every vertex a connection into the network. Now in the AIHL course, we have two different ways to find this minimum spanning tree. We have Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm. I won't go through how both of those two algorithms work. I recommend practicing some of the questions in the question bank, but that's what it provides. It provides a minimum spanning tree. Now there's, it's very likely to get an exam question on this uh, because it's quite a lifelike application. It would be, how do we connect all of these off, uh, office buildings together in the most cost-effective way or in the maybe the shortest distance? And the final two concepts I wanna talk about is traversing through every edge and traversing to every vertex. Now let's start with every edge. Picture that you were a postman starting at say a post office at vertex A. So picture this now to be like a town with roads and you want to deliver mail to all the houses on the rows that are represented by the edges. And perhaps these numbers here represent the distance in meters of these roads. Well. You, you don't really want to be duplicating roads. You just want to travel along every road once. So this particular type of problem here, which is called the Chinese postman problem, is how do we traverse to every edge exactly once and not duplicate any edges and finish back at the starting point? That's what this is all about. And the solution to the Chinese postman problem is finding what's called an Eulerian cycle. So that's one type of question, is traversing every edge exactly once, starting and finishing at the same point. And then kind of opposite to that is traversing every vertex. And that type of question is what's called what it is called the traveling salesman problem. So picture that you're a traveling salesman at a hotel 
at point A and you're in a new city and maybe you wanted to sell your product to a certain type of shop located at these vertices, A, uh, B through F, you don't want to duplicate any vertices. You want to go to every vertex exactly once, but you don't really mind if you duplicate the edges. So really the solution to the traveling salesman problem is how do I get to every vertex once only in the most efficient manner? Efficient meaning either lowest time or lowest cost. And the solution to the traveling salesman problem is finding the optimal Hamiltonian cycle. Okay. That was a high level over overview into graph theory. The ways in which these questions will be assessed is either number two through five. So I recommend now going practicing some of the graph theory questions over in the question bank.